It's also a really exciting possibility of hacking this whole thing by extending human lifespan or extending our notion of uh, of time and maybe as dark as to say, but the value of an individual human life versus the value of life from the perspective of generations. Yeah. So you can have something like a generational ship that travels for hundreds of thousands of years yeah. and it you're not sad uh, that you'll never see the destination because you kind of have the value for yeah. the uh, prolonged yeah. survival of humanity versus your own individual life. Yeah, it's a wild ethical question, isn't it? One of the, that book I told you about, Aurora, <laughs> was such, I love the book because it was such a sort of inversion of the usual. Because you know, I've read, I love science fiction. I've read so many generation ship stories, and they get to that planet. The planet turns out to be uninhabitable. It's inhabited, but it's uninhabitable for Earth because again, he has this idea of like you know, life is particular to their planets. So they turn around and they come back, and then when they land. The main character goes, for, there's still people who are, you know, arguing for more generation ships. And she goes and she punches the guy out because she spent her whole life in a tube, you know, with this. I, th I thought that was a really interesting inversion. You know, the interesting thing about, about we were talking about these space habitats, yeah. but if you really had a space habit, not some super cramped, you know, crappy, the usual version of a century ship. But if you had these like space habitats that were really, you know, like the O'Neill cylinders, they're actually pretty nice places to live. Put a thruster on those, you know? Like, why Why keep them in the solar system? Maybe that's, maybe space is full of, like, these sort of traveling space habitats mm -hmm. that are, in some sense, a, you know, they're worlds in, them, in and of themselves. There's the show Silo, which raises the question of, basically, if you're putting on a generational ship, uh, what do you tell the inhabitants of that ship? You might want to lie to them. Yeah. You might want to tell them a story. Right. That they believe. Right. Because there is a society, there's human nature, there's like, how do you maintain uh, homeostasis of that little society? Um, I mean, that, that's a fascinating technical yeah. question, the social question, the psychology question. You know, the generation ship too, and you know, which I talked about in the book, the idea of the, also the, you know, you talked about the extending human lifetimes or, um, you know, the stasis, the cryostasis, which is a mainstay yeah. of science fiction, you know, that, you know, right, you can be put to, you, know, you can basically put in suspended animation and such. None of these things we know are possible. But, you know, it's so interesting, and this is why I love science fiction, the way it seeds ideas, right? All these ideas we're going to talk about because they've been staples of science fiction for 50 years. I mean, the whole field of cryogenics. Yeah, where are we at with that? Yeah, I wonder what the state of the art is for a complex organism. Can how you long, freeze? Right. How long can you freeze and then unfreeze? Right. Maybe, maybe like with bacteria, you could do freeze. Oh, bacteria can last. This is the thing about panspermia, right? How long can... Uh, you know, how long can a uh, bacteria survive in a rock that's been blasted, you know, if there's a comet impact across, uh, you know, interstellar distances? That does seem to actually be possible. People have done those kind of calculations. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but a complex organism, multicellular, multisystemic or multisystems, right, with organs and such. Also, what makes an organism? I mean, it could, you know, which part do you want to preserve? Because maybe the for humans, it seems like uh, like what makes a personality, it feels like you want to preserve a set of memories. Like if I woke up in a different body with the same memories, I'd pretty much, I would feel like I would be the same person. Altered Carbon, have you, that's a, that's a great series. I think it's on Netflix. It's, 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 you know, that's a really great series where that's exactly the idea of sleeves. Everybody's able to like, you know, you can re-sleeve in another body. Um, and it raises exactly sort of this question. It's not the greatest cyberpunk, but it's pretty good. It's got it's got some great, great action sequences too. As we get better and better advancements in uh, large language models that are able to be fine tuned on you, it's, it raises a question because I, to, to me, they've already passed the Turing test as we traditionally have defined it. So if there's going to be an LLM that's able to copy you in terms of language extremely well. It's going to raise ethical and uh, I don't know philosophical questions about what makes you you. Like what if if there's a thing that can talk exactly like you, like what is the thing that makes you you? Is it, it is it it's it's going to speak about your memories very effectively. This leads us to if we're going to get to the the blind spot. I I you know I am of the opinion heretical in some camps that you know the brain is not the minimal the minimal structure for consciousness, you know, it's the whole body it's embodied and may actually in some sense it's communities actually. Um, so yeah, so I don't, I mean, I'm, you know, I could be wrong, but this is, you know, this is what this whole work that I did with Marcelo Gleiser and Evan Thompson, the, um, philosophy of science.
which is interesting because it leads to this question about, you know, Right. Oh, maybe we should just download ourselves into computers, right? That's another story that that one tells. I'm super skeptical about those, but is that's one of the narratives about interstellar travel is just like, and that anybody we meet is going to be a machine anyway, whether it's like whether it's downloaded bodies or it's just going to be artificial intelligence. Like, there's the whole idea of how long does biological evolution last? Maybe it's a very short period before everybody go, you know goes to, or the machines take over and you know kill you, or you know it's some hybrid.